actually we have a problem with how um, college campuses have uh, dealt with the issue of sexual misconduct and sexual violence on their campus or with their student population. So what we've seen um, across this country for many, many years are campuses reporting like no or very few instances of sexual assault. So, but we know that like one in five women will experience sexual violence while they're in college. We know for trans students, it's one in two. We know that men um, under the age of 18 experience it in rates of one in six. So like a lot of people on our campus are survivors of sexual violence. Now to the Me Too movement growing this uh, This morning. has been a very powerful to movement. Just stand in solidarity. An estimated 33 million American women yeah, have been sexually harassed. No, I'm not, I'm not. Two words. The Me Too movement. The Me Too movement. Me Too. The Me Too movement. The hashtag Me Too. Describe the movement taking over the social media. The problem with this Me Too stuff is it always People goes too far. People are the loser men who have predatory tactics there is to a go fear out between and the get a woman now. into bed. There's been a massive problem. Certainly, I mean, Hollywood's just More outrageous. women in Hollywood are coming forward. Accusing Hollywood producer the Harvey Weinstein scandal. President Bill Clinton. Ryan Seacrest, Senator Al Franken. It's not just these men who were acting in this bad way, but it was also an entire culture that supported them. Um, the Me Too movement was created by Tarana Burke in 2006. She is a black woman, an activist, who started this movement and this hashtag to raise awareness of the prevalence of sexual harassment and sexual violence within our culture. Um, and it kind of didn't really get the like viral response that happened in 2017 when Alyssa Milano, who is a famous actress, uh, posted it onto social media and with the call to if every woman that I know who has experienced sexual assault or sexual um, harassment would post Me Too as their status. And what we saw was this like national response of uh, people across the country responding with Me Too and then also sharing their stories, right? So sexual violence is an issue that is uh, shrouded in silence. Uh, there's so much shame and uh, blame that goes into this issue specifically for the victims and survivors. Um, so Me Too was sort of like this incredible moment in time where people from across the country were feeling empowered to speak out about what had happened to them. Right, storytelling is incredibly powerful. And how do we also work together to keep this movement, keep like the energy of this movement going so that we do actually see social and cultural change here on our campus, in our community, in this country. The first time I was ever um, sexually assaulted was at this school, like, two years ago and was from some guy I met and I don't know he just like shoved his penis in my mouth and didn't ask like that was it <laughs> it was it was just at first I didn't really know like I didn't really realize that that's not a sex or that that's sexual assault and or that I've been sexually assaulted I mean it's, it's really easy to like think about it, you know, when it's like in terms of other people, when it happens to yourself, it's kind of like, ugh. To this guy that I was dating and I've had an, like, I don't know if I, an amazing, like a deep level of like trust in because we dated for two years and he's like my boyfriend whenever. I had three encounters where I felt assaulted by him in our relationship. Which is like... I've been, I don't know, I've been trying to present in ways that like makes myself less attractive to men too. Um, I stopped wearing wet makeup, I stopped wearing feminine clothing. A very like vivid memory for me um, of one of my friends being assaulted was when I was a freshman and it was Halloween and she left with a guy from this party and I saw them leave together and normally I would suggest to check in on your friend before this happens but being a freshman I just wasn't I you know it's like she can handle herself and then about 20 minutes later she came running to us at this place we always hung out um, really distraught and crying and upset because and she just fell to the ground and I just spent that whole night talking to her and being with her and supporting her uh, because some guy the guy that she left with had assaulted her and 
like a meadow and pushed her down and tried to basically rape her and she just ran away which was um, a really positive outcome I think any other woman I know who's um, I'm close friends with hasn't been sexually assaulted at one point in her life Basically what is happening is more people are feeling empowered to report because they recognize that the process is good, that the process is hopefully going to lead to some justice, um, that they will be believed and supported. More perpetrators are having consequences and more survivors are getting supported, finding access to counseling, support groups, um, and ideally, I mean hopefully, being able to continue their education. Um, experiencing sexual violence while you're in college can lead to somebody leaving college. It's not uncommon, right? And so we are doing everything we can to support survivors on our campus and retain them so that they can stay and be successful and complete their goals of the college education. All right. I'm ready whenever you are. <laughs> All right. You were so